Hello everyone. Thanks for joining me on another math adventure. Grab your Go Math book if you don't have it and a pencil as we are getting ready to start lesson three of chapter 12. So in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about polygons. Polygons are um, specific types of shapes and we've already talked about plain shapes that are flat and plain shapes um, can sometimes be polygons. So I have a little video here that we're going to watch that explains what polygons are because there are some specific requirements in order for a shape to be called a polygon. So we'll watch this video first. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. And then we'll talk more about polygons using our math book. So here we go. <laughs> Hi there, welcome to Math Antics. So far in our series in geometry, we've learned about points, lines, planes, and angles. In this lesson, we're going to learn about another important element of geometry. We're going to learn about polygons. You probably already know a lot about polygons because you see them all the time. Here are some common examples that you might recognize. These shapes are all polygons. That's because a polygon just means a multi-sided shape. And these shapes all have multiple sides. Okay, so that's a basic definition of a polygon. But to really understand what is a polygon and what is not a polygon, we need to learn about the specific properties that all polygons have in common. First, we need to know the three parts that make up all polygons. And these parts are sides, vertices, and angles. The sides are just the straight line segments that make up a polygon. And the vertices are the points where the sides intersect. And the angles are formed by the intersecting lines. In fact, in Greek, the word polygon literally means many angles. So all polygons have sides, vertices, and angles. This polygon here has five sides, five vertices, and it forms five angles. The next thing we need to know about polygons is that they're closed shapes. Now, what does it mean for a shape to be closed, you ask? Well, it means that the sides are connected so that there are no gaps. The area inside the shape is separated from the area outside the shape, and there's no way to get from the inside to the outside without crossing a line. It might help to think of a closed shape like a cage. If you put an ant inside the cage, then there's no way for it to get out without crossing a line. But if the shape is open, then there is a way out. So these are all examples of closed shapes. And these are all examples of open shapes. And the important thing to remember is that a polygon must be closed. And the last thing we need to know about polygons is that they're two-dimensional or flat shapes. And that means that all the vertices must lie on the same plane. If any one of the vertices were to move forwards or backwards so that it wasn't on the same plane as all the other vertices, then it wouldn't be a flat shape anymore. Flat shapes are also called planar shapes because all of their points are on the same plane. And even though polygons themselves can't be 3D shapes, you can use polygons to make 3D shapes, like a box, for example. The box is not a polygon, but each of its flat sides is a polygon. All right then, we now have a specific definition of a polygon. A polygon is a multi-sided shape that has sides, vertices, and angles. A polygon is a closed shape, and a polygon is a two-dimensional or a flat shape. And now that you know that, it's time to play Polygon or Not a Polygon. Now here's your host, me. Thank you, thank you. All right, now the rules of the game are simple. I'm gonna show you a shape and you tell me if it's a polygon or not a polygon. Are you ready to play? Our first shape is a square. Is a square a polygon? Yes! A square has four sides and four vertices, and it's a closed 2D shape. So it is a polygon. And next we have... Hmm, not exactly sure what to call this, but is it a polygon? Nope, it's close, but because it's an open shape, it can't be a polygon. All right, what about this one? Polygon or not polygon? Yep, it is a polygon. 
Even though the sides aren't all the same length, it is a closed 2D multi-sided shape. In fact, if you count, you'll see that it has seven sides. <laughs> ah, what about this one? Is a circle a polygon? Huh? Well, it is a closed 2D shape, but how many sides does it have? Now that's the problem. A circle doesn't have any straight sides, vertices, or angles. It's a curved shape, so it's not a polygon. Oops. Next, we have a star shape, just like me. Is it a polygon? Yup. It has straight sides and vertices, and it's a closed 2D shape. That means it's a polygon. And what about this one? Right you are. This is not a polygon. It's a dog. Huh? <laughs> ah, here's an interesting one. It's a closed 2D shape that does have straight sides and vertices, but it also has this curved part here. Can it still be a polygon with that curve there? No. The curved part disqualifies it as a polygon. <laughs> Polygon has to have only straight sides, so this is not a polygon. And what about this guy here? Is this a polygon? Well, it is just straight lines, but two of those lines cross, and if any lines cross, it can't be a polygon. Plus, he has this big open end here, so this guy is definitely not a polygon. And last of all, what about this one? Right you are, this is not a polygon, because it's a 3D shape. It's made from polygons, but the whole shape is not a polygon itself. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Join us next week as we decide, is it bigger than one? Okay, so after playing that game, you should have a really good idea of what a polygon is and what it is not. The last thing I want to mention is that some polygons have special names depending on how many sides they have. Here's a list of the most important ones to know. Three-sided polygons are called triangles. Triangles are so important in geometry that they'll get a whole video of their own. Four-sided polygons are called quadrilaterals. <laughs> wow, now that's a fancy math word. But it helps if you just remember that the first part, quad, means four. Quadrilaterals are shapes like squares, rectangles, and parallelograms. They'll also get a video of their own. Five-sided polygons are called pentagons. Six-sided polygons are called hexagons. And eight-sided polygons are called octagons. By the way, polygons that have five, six, eight, or however many sides like this are called regular polygons if all of their angles are equal, and irregular polygons if their angles are not equal. Of course, there are a lot more polygons than that, but you probably won't need to know their names. As long as you know what polygons are and how to identify them, then you're ready to move on. The exercises for this section are pretty easy, so no excuses. Good luck, thanks for watching Math Antics, and I'll see you next time. Learn more at mathantics.com. All right. So, hopefully you learned a little bit about polygons from that video. So if you want to go ahead and open up your math book to page 709, we're going to go ahead and get started with lesson three. So it says in the earlier lessons, you learned about line segments and angles. In this lesson, you will see how line segments and angles make polygons. So remember, a polygon is a closed shape. It has to be a closed plane shape that is made up of line segments that meet only at their end points. So in the video, he referred to those endpoints as the vertices. Each line segment in a polygon is called a side. So polygons have to be closed shapes, and they have to have straight sides. They have to have at least two straight sides, otherwise it would be open. You cannot draw a figure that has only two sides. There is no shape with just two sides that has a specific name. That's why triangle is the first polygon that we can give a specific name to because having three sides ensures that it is a closed shape. So when they unlock the problem, we need to circle the words that describe the shape. I'm just going to highlight them as it's gonna make it a little bit easier 
um, from me on the computer screen here. But my computer's been running a little slow. I think I've been trying to do way too many things on it lately. So um, just bear with me here, please. All right, so in letter A, we have a rounded shape. Many of us would simply call that a circle. So we have to circle the words that describe the shape. So is it a plain shape? Is it flat on your paper? Yes, so it is a plain shape. Is it open? No, clearly it is closed. So we're gonna circle closed. Does it have curved paths? Absolutely it does, it's all curved. Does it have line segments? Line segments are those straight sides? No way. And would this be a polygon? This is not a polygon, boys and girls, because it does not have straight sides that meet at endpoints. So we would, even though we have a special name for this shape, we call it a circle, it is not a polygon. All right, let's look at letter B. Is it a plain shape? Yeah, it's just a flat shape on paper. Is it open? Yes, you can see that there's an opening, so it's not closed. Does it have curved paths? Yes, it's kind of curved, almost looks like the letter G. Does it have straight line segments? No, it does not. They're all kind of curved. And would this be a polygon? No, as soon as we have curved paths, it eliminates this shape from being a polygon. All right, let's look at letter C. Is this a plain shape? Yes, it's a flat shape on paper. Is it open? No, it is closed. Does it have curved paths? No. Does it have straight line segments? Yes. So is this shape a polygon? Absolutely. Because it is a plain shape that is closed and has straight line segments, we would call this a polygon. And letter D, is this a plain shape? Yep, flat shape. Is it open? Nope, it's closed. Does it have curved paths? Yes. Does it have line segments? It does, actually, at the bottom. If you look at this as maybe like a rainbow, the bottom um, two segments are straight. But would we call this a polygon? And the answer is no, because it has those curved paths. As soon as it has curved paths, that eliminates the shape from being a polygon. All right, so let's try this. We need to fill in the blanks with the word sometimes, always, or never. So polygons are blank, plain shapes. Polygons always have to be plain shapes, boys and girls, because they have to be flat. So... You can fit the word always in that blank. How about polygons are blank closed shapes? Remember in the video, we talked about how polygons always need to be closed shapes. If a shape is open, we cannot call it a polygon. Polygons are blank open shapes. Well, kind of the opposite of always being closed, they are never going to be open. And plain shapes are blank polygons. Plain shapes, are they sometimes polygons, always polygons, or never polygons? Boys and girls, if you look up top where we were sorting out our shapes up here, if you look at that first row, um, all of those shapes were plain shapes, but were they always polygons? And the answer there is no. They were only polygons whenever they were closed and had straight line segments. So sometimes we can have a plain shape like the circle, and it would not be considered a polygon. So for this blank, we need to squeeze in the word sometimes. 
plane shapes are sometimes polygons. All right, nice job. Let's go ahead and move on to the next page. Here's where we get into naming the specific types of polygons by the number of sides and angles that they have. And I'm sure from the video, you are familiar with some of those names, some common names for polygons that we have um, heard before. So it talks about a traffic sign, a stop sign. It is in the shape of a polygon because when you think about it, stop signs, they're flat and they have straight sides and it is a closed shape. And when we want to try to figure out what kind of polygon a stop sign would be, we have to count the number of sides and angles. So if you count around the sides of the, um, of the stop sign, you would count that it has eight sides. And if a shape has eight sides, if you remember my hint from the other day, it also has eight angles. And it would also have eight vertices or those corner points. Um, so right here, we have an eight-sided shape uh, and an eight uh, shape, a polygon that has eight angles as well. So we're going to find out what we call that shape down below. So if you look, triangles, our first highlighted um, polygon, tri means three. So triangles have three sides and three angles, okay? These are all different triangles there. Um, they can come in different sizes and the way that the lines are drawn to connect to one another can be different. Um, but as long as a shape has three sides and three angles, it would be called a triangle. Quadrilaterals, quad means four. I'm sure many of you have gone on a uh, quad ride before, or you call a quad sometimes a four wheeler because quads have four wheels. So quad means four. So quadrilaterals are those shapes that have four sides. And therefore, if they have four sides, they would also have four angles. And there are some specific names of quadrilaterals like squares, rectangles, trapezoids, maybe you've heard of parallelograms and rhombuses before. Um, we'll be learning about those specifically in another lesson because there are so many types of quadrilaterals. But basically, we just need to know that any four-sided shape is called a quadrilateral. And then I'm sure you can guess the next one, since we're kind of going in order, three, four, five, we would call our five-sided shapes a pentagon. If you remember when we were learning about the events of 9-11, we talked about how one of the planes um, crashed into the Pentagon building, which is a governmental building, and the way the Pentagon is set up is it has five sides. So Pentagon, penta means five. So all of these shapes here are five-sided shapes and they have five angles, but you can see how they look very different from one another. Um, you know, one kind of looks almost like a ribbon. Um, one looks like home base and, and baseball maybe. Um, sometimes they kind of look like houses, but a five-sided shape we would call a pentagon. All right, six-sided shapes. Six, when you think of the word six, it has an X in it. And when you think of what we call six-sided shapes, hexagons, um, I always try to tell my students to remember, you know, X is not a very common letter in words. So when you think of a hexagon, it has six sides and it would therefore also have six angles. So these shapes that you see in the box are all hexagons. They have six sides and six angles. Next we have what we call an octagon. What do you think of when you hear the word octagon? I think of an octopus. And if you know anything about an octopus, it has eight um, eight legs or eight tentacles. So an octopus has eight legs and octagons have eight sides and eight angles. 
that would be what we call a stop sign, boys and girls. Stop signs have eight sides and eight angles, so it is specifically an octagon. Most octagons we'll see are in the shape of a stop sign, but you can see a couple other examples of octagons in that box as well. Um, those are the most common types of polygons that we will see and, and use names for. However, I always have students go a little farther and ask me about some other um, shapes. And so a decagon, when you think of a decade, a decade means 10, 10 years. And so decagons are shapes that have 10 sides and 10 angles. Boys and girls, as we start to add more and more sides and angles to a shape, it becomes a little harder to draw um, because you have to have a lot of obtuse angles, a lot of big, wide, open angles. And so the more sides and angles we add into a shape, the more and more it starts to look like a circle. It almost starts to look like the sides are curving. Um, so really, we don't go beyond decagons you know in our math lessons um, but there are names for shapes that have a hundred sides or a thousand sides um, maybe that could be a little extra activity after this lesson you can go and search for what those shapes look like and what they're called um, but also i've had students ask me well wait we skipped over you know seven-sided figures um, a shape that has seven sides is called a heptagon Hepta, you know, means seven. So heptagons have seven sides. And then um, I've also had students ask, well, what about nine-sided shapes then? Because we kind of go from eight to 10. Um, I'm trying to make this a little bit smaller here. Um, but a nine-sided figure is called a nonagon. Pretty sure about that. Um, so there we go. From three sides <clears throat> up to 10 sides, we have specific names for these polygons. But like I said, um, triangles, quadrilaterals, pentagons, hexagons, and octagons are the most common ones that you will need to, to know. Okay, so we kind of already answered the rest of the questions down here. How many sides does a stop sign have? We said that a stop sign has eight sides. Um, and so therefore it also has eight angles and it is in the shape of an octagon. Okay, so you can just fill in those blanks there along with me. All right, down to our share and show. The shape at the right is a polygon. Circle all the words that describe the shape. So we know it is a polygon because one, it is a plain shape. When we look at this shape over here, it is a flat shape on paper. Is it open? No, it is closed. Is it a pentagon? Remember a pentagon has five sides. This shape has one, two, three, four. So this is not a pentagon. Does it have curved paths? No. Does it have line segments? Yes, it has straight line segments. Is it a hexagon? Remember hex, the X, hex means six. So does this have six sides? No. Is it a quadrilateral? That answer is yes, because it is a four-sided shape. All right. Over to our next page. We just need to say, is the shape a polygon, right? Yes or no? Kind of like in the video, the little game show he did for us. Well, number two, even though it does have straight segments, they're not closed. So this is not a polygon. We would say no. Number three, is number three a polygon? has straight sides, it's a plain figure, and it's closed, so yes. And I'm gonna add something extra that we would call this a triangle because it has three sides. So we wanna start to practice using the names of polygons. Number four, is it a polygon? 
No way, because it is open. It's not closed up. All right. Write the number of sides and the number of angles, then name the polygon. All right. So we have a yield sign. Yield kind of means to slow down whenever you're maybe merging onto a road coming um, off of a ramp or something like that. So let's look at the sides. I'm using my purple pen here. It has one, two, three. So if it has three sides and three angles, what would we call that shape? A triangle. Oh, it helps if I can spell. All right, so this is a triangle. There are different kinds of triangles, specific types of triangles that we will um, learn some names for too later on. All right, number six. I like how number six, they made a shape that has one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So therefore it has six angles. And what do we call a six-sided shape? Remember that X? Hexagon, you got it, a hexagon. Okay, and on number seven, Let's look at this shape. It has one, two, three, four, five sides, five angles, and the name for a five-sided shape is a pentagon. So we have a pentagon here. All right, very good. On your own, again, if you wanna pause the video and try this on your own, just to quiz yourself, Otherwise, you can keep the video rolling and, and go along here with me. Is number eight a polygon? Remember, a polygon has to be a plain, flat shape, has to have straight sides, and it has to be closed. So the fact that this has curved sides, no, not a polygon. Is number nine a polygon? Well, it is a flat, plain figure, and it has straight sides, but it is open, so nope. It is not a polygon. How about number 10? Would we call this a polygon? It's flat, it has straight sides, and they are closed. So yes, this is a polygon. Can we give it a specific name? Let's count the sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. An eight-sided shape like an octopus would be an octagon. Hard to write with this pen. Not like up on the smart board. I could use my fingers. All right, number 11, write the number of sides and number of angles and then name the polygon. So number 11 has one, two, three, four sides and four four angles. So it is that big word, a quadrilateral. I'm not going to write all of that. You don't have to either. Just write quad. <laughs> quad means four. All right. Number 12 is a pedestrian sign. It means people are crossing. So when drivers see that sign, they need to be extra careful. Let's count the sides. Two, three, four, five five sides, five angles. So it is a pentagon. Woo! <laughs> Don't judge my handwriting. <laughs> All right. And number 13. Wow, look at this shape. Let's count the sides and angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten sides and 10 angles makes this, do you remember? A decagon. You gotta type that one out, go a little quicker. All right, so that's a decagon. It has 10 sides and 10 angles. Excellent, let's cruise over to the next page, problem solving. Jake said shapes A through E are all polygons. Does this statement statement makes sense. Explain your answer. Well, let's look at shapes A through E. 
Does anybody notice anything? Does this make sense? Uh, I'm gonna say no. And the reason this does not make sense, Jake, is because letter B has curved sides. So shape B has curved, I don't even wanna call them sides, it has curved paths. And shape, let's go down to the next line. Shape D, what's wrong with shape D? It's open. So boys and girls, it does not make sense to say that all of those are polygons. Shape B has curved paths and shape D is open. So those two are not polygons. All right, number 15. I am a closed shape made of six line segments. I have two angles less than a right angle and no right angles. What shape am I? Okay, this is a little tricky. We have to draw a six-sided shape, so that means we're drawing a hexagon. I have two angles less than a right, so that means they are acute. They are teeny tiny acute angles, and the shape has to, uh, it doesn't have any right angles. That means no perfect corners. So I'm thinking here, let's start, whoop, I didn't want it to do that. Let me make first, I'm going to make an acute angle because I know the shape has to have an acute angle. And that gives me two sides right now. Um, and then I'm going to make another acute angle off of this. Something like that. Okay, so does everyone see my acute angles less than 90 degrees right in here right in there is acute it's pinching in and on this one right in here it's acute it's also pinching in so that only gives me though four sides one two three four and i need to have six so what if i do this um i don't know five and then close it up, six. I don't know, something like that might work, although I think I made another acute angle. Kind of tricky to make these kind of shapes. Let's see if I can do another one, maybe just with my pen. Let's see, I'm trying to, all right, maybe over here. I make this a big Y, there we go. That's greater than 90 degrees. And then I can do my teeny acute angle. Um, one, two, three, four. And then I can do, oh my goodness, why is this so tricky? And close it up. That might work. Doesn't look pretty. <laughs> but I've got two acute angles. Let's see, I'll highlight those. Here's an acute angle and here's an acute angle pinching in. And then the other angles are obtuse. This one's opening wide, opening wide, opening wide, and then this angle is really wide because it goes kind of around. It's even greater than 90 degrees. It's like way greater, greater than 180 degrees, but none of that matters. All right. Um, so yeah, do your best to draw a shape like that. I'm obviously not going to be able to look at your shape, so do the best that you can. Um, let's move on to number 16, though, just because I don't want to keep you too long. Number 16, think smarter. Is every closed shape a polygon? Use a drawing to help answer, uh, explain your answer. We already talked about this and saw this in the video. Um, no, not every shape is a polygon. Um, every closed shape is not a polygon because sometimes they have curved paths. 
No, because a circle is closed but has curved paths. So we know what a circle is. It's a flat shape. It's closed up, but it's not a polygon because it's it's rounded. Okay, there's a circle, even an oval shape. We we have a name for that. Um, it has curved paths. So neither of these, ooh, neither of these are polygons. They are closed shapes. All right, number 17, make an argument. Ivan says that the shape at the right is an octagon. Do you agree or disagree? Well, first we need to think of what an octagon is. Remember, an octagon has to have eight sides and angles. So let's simply count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh-oh, nine. <laughs> So is this an octagon? Are we agreeing with this? Mm, do you agree or disagree? Disagree because it has, let me shrink this down. We're going to disagree. Think of why, how are we explaining our answer here? Disagree because it has nine sides, not eight. So that would be a nonagon. Ivan might not know that. All right, true or false for these ones down here? Um, is this shape a polygon? True, it's closed. It has straight sides and it's flat. Is it an open shape? No. Is it a hexagon? Oh, hexagon, hex, hex has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, this is a hexagon. So if it is a hexagon, is it a pentagon? No, pentagons have five sides. So true, false, true, false. All right, home stretch here, boys and girls. Turn the page. Practice and homework. If you would like to pause and try this on your own, that is fine. Give it a go. Otherwise, stick with me and we'll go over the answers here together. All right. Is the shape a polygon? Number one, they did for us. No, because it's curved. Is number two? Yes. Number two is a polygon because it is flat, closed, and has straight sides. Number three, how many sides and angles? So we have to count them. I like to trace them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, special polygon that has six sides and six angles. What do we call that? Remember that X? A hexagon. Don't forget it. Hexagons. All right, on number four, how many sides and angles? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Four sides, therefore it has four angles and any four-sided shape. Any four-sided shape is a quadrilateral. I spelled it out that time. I also cheated and typed it. But you could just write quad if you would like there. Quad means four. All right, Mr. Murphy, number five. Mr. Murphy has an old coin that has ten sides. If its shape is a polygon, how many angles does the old coin have? Okay, this is not a trick question. We don't see the picture of the coin, but if it has 10 sides, that equals the same number of angles. So 10 angles, simple as that, boys and girls. The shape has 10 sides, it has 10 angles. If a shape has 100 sides, it will have 100 angles. All right, number six. Lynn says that an octagon has six sides. Chris says that it has eight sides. Whose statement is correct? Well, octagon, like an octopus, has eight sides. So I'm sorry to say, Lynn, you are incorrect. Chris is right. Don't tell my husband Chris that because he's never right. <laughs> 
Anyways, moving on. Number seven, draw a pentagon. Explain how you knew the number of sides and angles to draw. Well, let's think. Triangles have three sides. Quadrilaterals have four. Um, so pentagons have five sides and five. I'm really struggling with typing today. They have five sides and five angles. So knowing that, it's going to help us draw a pentagon. So let's do that. Um, I'm gonna draw one, two, mine's gonna be like a house, three, four, five. Make sure it's closed up, make sure your lines are straight and make sure you have five of them. There we go, pentagon. All right, last page. What is the name for this polygon? In order to name a polygon, we have to count the sides. And this polygon has four sides, so that would make it a quadrilateral. Quadrilaterals have four sides and four angles. And number two, how many sides does this polygon have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it has six sides, which I'm going to add a bonus on there. What do we call a six sided shape? Six, 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 X, hexagon. Call it a hexagon. Doesn't hurt to add a little extra work, boys and girls. Extra effort can happen at home. <laughs> All right. How many right angles does this shape have? How many right angles? I see four little symbols in those corners that tell me it's a perfect corner. So there are four right angles. Always good to put a label on your work. Number eight, Erica has eight necklaces. One fourth of them are blue. How many are blue? All right, well, let's just do a little picture here. So she has eight necklaces. Let's just, let me see here, what do I want to do? Da, 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 da. Let's do my little highlighter here. All right, she has eight necklaces. One, two, that doesn't work. Let's do the pink. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight necklaces and one fourth of them are blue. So that means we need to divide into four groups and look at one of those groups as being blue. So if these were our blue ones, one fourth of eight is equal to two. She has two blue necklaces. All right, number five, what is straight? Part of a line and has two endpoints. Okay, well, Let's see, what is straight? Part of a line and it has two endpoints. Okay, so endpoints are like these stop signs at the end. Huge. Almost looks like a weight too. Lift your weight, get stronger. All right, well this is part of a line, so it is a line segment. Lines go on and on forever, remember they have air tips at the end. And what describes this angle? If you look at that angle, it is pinching in teeny tiny. It is less than a right angle, or we learned a special name for that, acute. So I'm gonna put both in, less than right, acute, slash acute. It's an acute angle. Alrighty then, boys and girls, I hope your learning at home is going well. I know as the week goes on, I am missing school more and more and miss seeing you guys and interacting with you in class. Um, so I just hope that you are doing well. If you have any questions or need anything from me, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'll try to do some live videos or you know video conferences where um, we get together maybe on zoom 
or try Google Meets or something in the future so we can try to get on and see some of our friends. But in the meantime, keep working hard, um, be nice to one another at home, and enjoy the extra family time that you have. Um, boys and girls, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And don't forget, it's April Fool's Day. Feel free to do a little prank on mom or dad. Just kidding. Everyone's kind of on edge right now with all that's going on. So be kind to one another, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.